Want to know what your dog is thinking? Have a challenging dog behavior you need help with? The Dish on Dogs is your source for all your canine questions. Improve your relationship with your dog and deepen your understanding of your furry friend. Right here on the Dish on Dogs. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Welcome to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, affectionately known, sometimes affectionately known as the mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the absolute happiest dogs on earth. If you can't tell, we're celebrating our the end of the year holidays. We're wishing everybody a happy holiday. All the craziness that's happening, which I despise. Uh, we'll talk about, well, I do, I despise the human activity. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, so Jackie, Jackie Bondanzer, my co-host, my life partner, the brains of Houndstown, we've survived another year. I know. Another year went by fast. It went by fast. There's so many things that's happened since this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we invent, we're working on our containment brackets. We're working on a book. We're working on the Houndstown hustle. Yes. These are all things yeah. that have been happening this year. Um our, our franchisees in our locations are doing better than they ever have. Crazy. Uh, we have more dogs in our facilities than we ever have before, thanks to, you know, the pandemic, really, and a lot of people adopting pandemic puppies. So it's really nice that we've been able to provide dogs that opportunity to come and play at Houndstown. And we're just kind of celebrating the end of the year. And, great. Um, great year. And talk about, too, you know, recap maybe some of the charity work we've done and a lot of our locations have uh, taken in foster dogs and and you know worked with their local municipal shelters and other rescues to offer dogs discounted boarding and doggy daycare you know uh just been a lot of great heartwarming stories over the past one. couple of months that um especially our, our henderson nevada location they they've done a lot of great work over the year um bergen county Stephen anthony they continue to partner with um you know, the Bergen County Animal Shelter, um, a lot of nice things happening. Great things. Simple but nice. Simple, simple but, but nice, nice things, which which segues into our whole business model. Keep mm -hmm. things simple. We don't have to do big things, but we do very worthy things that, that, that are very effective. What about on a personal note? What have you been up to? I see anything happening in your world new? <laughs> what have I been up to? Well, just trying to keep everybody happy and healthy and uh -huh. the company running. And we're, you, you know, things? we're seeing so many great franchise right. candidates coming in. We've sold, you know, dozens of, you know, uh, new locations. We're getting stores open. We're expanding our team. Yeah. Just, you know, very grateful for everybody that's participated in that yeah. and, and gone the extra mile to help just get Houndstown out there in the world. Right. And one thing that, that, that you also are involved in another charity, I'd like you to talk about that because to me that is very heartwarming. Uh, you know, we had an event here uh, in the past summer. So talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that's a, a good, that's a good point. Kind of an, ex right. an extension of our philanthropic efforts here at Houndstown. We are mm -hmm. the corporate sponsor for campaign one at a time. It's a childhood cancer charity so every year we have a barbecue here in the summer right. and we raise money and um this year we were able to send a little girl gianna to disney world she hasn't gone yet because she's just recovering from leukemia but when she gets healthy enough to travel she'll be going there um and uh so it's nice to give back you know right. we are a family owned and operated business here at houndstown we always have right. been and it's really important right. to give back not only to dogs but to kids right. and humans and our franchisees, our employees, right. anyone that we can. Yeah. And that concept I get, you know, wanting to give back and that. But to me, it's not, it's, I, I'm not giving anything, whether it's these kids or the dogs, they're giving back to me. So yeah. this is not a, you know, we're giving back. I mean, I get it. You know, but for me personally, it's what I get out of them. So I just have to be around these little kids. I have to be around these dogs. And it focuses me, or it takes my mind off all these crazy things. Right. Good news for me, I've fulfilled a couple of my life dreams. Up, you know, as I get older, I've always and I joined a naked unicycle riding club. Oh my uh, god! And I'm learning the the moonwalk. That he's joking about. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Jackie. And and the moonwalk, I'm getting there. I had to lose okay. a few pounds. So those were your those goals my, for this those year. Those are my big life bucket list okay. types of things. Well, so glad I'm you. Well, on my way to that. Well, I think that speaks to something that's really important. 
What's that? To Houndstown and should be important to all of you, right? Especially around the holidays is having fun and not taking yourself too seriously. Just being grateful for being alive. I mean, we rarely take the time to kind of just step back and, and, and enjoy the simple things in life. And I think that's what I love about Houndstown the most is that dogs are simple. They're never really in bad moods. You know, they just want to kind of come to Houndstown and have fun. Absolutely, Jackie. And this is a message for our family, our franchisees, our customers. In the words of Carly Simon, these are the good old days. You know, we're always waiting for the next best thing, the next vacation we go on, the next whatever. These are the good old days. If you have a pulse, these are the good old days. And enjoy them. Live in the moment. Like you said, we are not making nuclear weapons here. We are interacting with dogs and humans, and that's what our life is. So for our franchisees especially, they're segueing out of other parts of their life, corporate, all this crazy human things. And they can come here, and almost it's a critical part when we do our discovery days, meaning when we meet potential franchisees. You have to have fun. That's your Obviously, every day of our lives can't be fun. But you have to appreciate, live in the moment like dogs do. Learn your lessons from dogs. They're not judging. They're not racist. They're not homophobic. They're living in the moment of time. And so are two or three-year-old children. So there's no secret. There's no secret that being around a baby smiling, laughing, and a dog releases all our happy hormones. Mm Mm-hmm. There's no secret to that. So appreciate it. Take it, you know, all the struggles of COVID and this and money and the price of gas. It's very toxic right now. Well, I think going back to your comment about why the holidays drive you crazy is really because people get crazy about buying gifts and traveling and material things. And of course, you know, there's a level of importance to those things. But really, if we stop to think about it, it's it's really just a time to be grateful for a lot of things. Thank you, Jackie. That puts it in a nutshell. I get, I do have, I do have literally have social anxiety around holidays. I really do because of the expectations of everything that's involved. I'm not, uh, you know, I believe it or not, I'm very introverted. It's hard to believe. I know that. That I don't believe. Right. But this is, this is not, I sit back and I watch. So if I'm at a, it's very awkward for me to be in, in certain social situations, the expert, who do I buy gifts for? How much? What did they get me? It, It gets me insane. It gets me insane. So I'd much rather close my eyes and wake up on January 3rd, if that was possible. Um, but I guess January if I, 3rd? Well, January 3rd. I'd say after all this craziness. Okay. Of course, we got thanks, all of these holidays that build up towards the end of the year, then New Year's. And then after that, life goes back to relative normalcy. And to me, it, it very frankly is, and, and people don't understand, but I'm anxious, 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 neurotic. I'm very awkward around of people other than present company. All right, well, let's talk let's about dogs. Let's talk about uh, dogs is, during no, the this holidays. This is a therapy session. I'm sorry. Right. I'll, give yes. you co-pay. I'll give you my copay. Uh, go yes. talk to your therapist. Uh, talk let's talk about dogs during the holidays because it, it's actually a good point. So when the activity increases in our homes, right, yes. for the holiday, there's people coming over, there's more dinners, there's people drinking, you know, the, the increased activity really affects dogs as well. So what are some tips for the holidays that people are hosting, you know, people at their house? What are some tips to, to help the dog manage through this? Right. Well, just like I highlighted my anxiety around social events, and I can use my human brain to understand. You can tell me companies coming over and my... And I'm like, oh, God. Go hide in the bedroom. I I go lock myself in the bedroom. You can tell me these things so my human brain can kind of navigate through these as much as I hate it. I understand in, in front of me right now in this studio, this is something new. There's a Christmas tree. So I have to understand what that is, right? There's balls on it. A, so for a dog, if whatever whatever you celebrate, it usually comes with some religious ornaments, right? Whether it's Hanukkah, whether it's Christmas, whatever it is, uh, there'll be candles or something. Dogs don't understand this concept. We do. Right. I, you understand it. To, to a dog, talking about one of the episodes we talked about a dog marking, it wakes up one morning and there's a tree growing in its living room. Right. It's going to piss all over it. Right. <laughs> and then what's hanging from it? Balls. <laughs> Holy mackerel! Like he's got like this this new treat for him. There's, there's right. There's 
objects that they can there's pull off the tree. There's ornaments, there's candy. Yeah. There's what are those peppermint things called? Candy canes. Candy canes. So all of this stuff just just came in the middle in of the, the night. Right. To us like children. So that's just one aspect of it. Then all your crazy relatives are coming. Your drunken uncle is coming. Everybody's coming. And they're all going to have a different perspective. They're going to want to pet your dog. The dog is our hostage. It couldn't be like me. I make up some lie and I fly away to some pl far in place. The dog is locked in your house. And you're dressing him up. You're probably putting one of these ridiculous hats on him. He's probably got a costume for Halloween or whatever the hell. The, whatever the, by the way, all of these events, <laughs> Halloween, Thanksgiving, the, the dog bite ratio goes up exponentially yeah. with all of these events. And guess what? Who suffers when your dog bites your drunken uncle? Who suffers? Not your drunken uncle. Your dog. Because now he's labeled as a biter, right? It doesn't matter that he, you, you've pushed yourself, your toxic personalities. All right. Let's, I'm sorry. All right. Again, <laughs> right. we're going off the deep end here. This getting, isn't, I'm, I'm visualizing. This isn't, I'm not your Christian. therapist. So. I'm sorry. But okay. I'm, what can people do to prevent that from happening? <laughs> right. Well, smart people will bring their dogs to Houndstown for these, for these holidays. Nice these, plug. Nice plug. Well, well it's a fact. <laughs> It's a fact. No, I know. What we do is provide a dog experience, not a dog human experience. So bring your dog to a place that it can interact with other dogs. So that's the number one thing. Then if you can't, God forbid, leave your dog overnight somewhere other than your house, then you have to start thinking a little bit normally. But the time is now or for next year is to set these boundaries. So as you said, if it's my choice, I could go in my bedroom and lock the door. I don't feel good. I've ate something, too many peppermint sticks. So I go into the bedroom and lock the door. Allow your dog that access to a private place. We, you know, again, whether it's a crate, but you do that during the year. So the young, so you don't prepare dogs for begging at the table a week before Thanksgiving. Right. People call me. They'll say, Mike, I'm having 30 people over. My dog is a pain in the ass. He begs at the table. This isn't the time. You should have thought about that months ago. Right. So if you set the good habits in advance, it obviously helps the dog interact. The other thing that we see a lot, and I understand it, right, is that people want their dog to be a part of the festivities. And that's okay for some dogs. For other dogs, dogs don't, it gives them anxiety to be a part of it, right? And that's where the access to a crate, a bedroom, a room, somewhere where the dog can go and when they choose to remove themselves from the festivities. That's really important for the dog to feel safe and secure, right? right? Of course. And, and yes, Jackie, of course. And we teach that, right? And in our general day-to-day -day life, we have always, we every one of our dogs have a crate, mm -hmm. usually in our bedroom or someplace away from, just like a bedroom is designed to be away from the kitchen and living room, that's why I have the ability to go way into my bedroom and lock the door. So that was designed that way. I wouldn't try to take a nap on the couch when everybody's, you know, doing the chicken dance or whatever they do at these festivities. What Christmas party have you been to where people are doing the chicken dance? I don't know. They dance? do crazy. People do crazy <laughs> things. It's crazy, in my view. So the answer is yes to all that. But understand, again, take your big, sophisticated human brain. Would you take a two-year-old child to New Year's Eve in Manhattan at Times Square? Right. You wouldn't. Right. You know that you get a babysitter. And you go, you don't try to include your two-year-old, although I see people doing it, which, of course, that's another episode. But they're trying to take a two-year-old child that are very similar to dogs, by the way. Actually, they're far smarter. A two-year-old child has greater intellect, so to speak, than, than a, a, any, a, any dog. So, But we're always trying, to, and even at a Christmas party, <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you have a two-year-old, at some point, seven, eight, or nine o'clock, the kid's going, yeah, to, they're the going to bed. Yeah, they're going to bed. They're going to crib. Right, so it's the same. It's the same concept for dogs, and obviously, yes. allowing dogs access to, you know, table scraps and food. There are foods that are dangerous for dogs, so you've got to just be mindful yeah. of this, and you always want to try to keep your dog's energy balanced, right? Balance so we don't want mm -hmm. dogs getting out of whack, like we say, and mm -hmm. so allow them the opportunity to remove themselves from the right. center of the energy. And give them the opportunity to choose whether they want to be involved right. in the festivities Absolutely. or not. My dogs aren't great with people, right? They, they get too frenetic and crazy. So when people come over, I give them a marrow bone, which they absolutely love. It keeps them busy for two hours. And they're in 
my bedroom while the right. I'm having Thanksgiving dinner. That way I don't have to worry about the interaction between the dog and new people. I don't have to worry about the dog begging at the table and yelling at him. I can just, right. you know, we're, we're separated a little right. bit. And that's back to our fundamentals, boundaries, leadership, and consistency. And to your point, we have our two-legged dog, Rosie. If you tell her to go place in her wheelchair, she yes. beelines it and tries to crash into her crate. She beelines it she like a rocket ship yeah. just by the simple words, go place. Uh, and you can have that experience. So it's all about what you said, just allow, understanding, balancing dogs out, knowing what their, their real needs are. You know what your needs are. I guess you should. Understand what you're doing to dogs sometimes are toxic. My final point, I know we got to wrap up. I'm often criticized of being kind of the Debbie Downer of dog ownership because of my insistence on this, but I will tell you, I get the phone calls with people crying that their four year old lab bit a 10 year old in the yeah. face yesterday and they've never seen it happening. So I'm the bearer of that. And at that point, or the vets who are, are taking dislodging items, Christmas balls from a dog's stomach. Right. And it's all good until it's not good. So right. I don't like to be that. And 90% of the times, you, you know, I would have a stressful holiday, but, but I'd manage my dogs. And I'm sure people do that. But you can take that, that anxiety off yourself and manage your dog properly. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Is that a good episode? Well, yeah, I, I, I would like to close this episode out just by saying thank you to every single person that's listening, all of our customers, all of our franchisees who have worked so incredibly hard this year to make their businesses successful. It really is, I, it really is astonishing to watch. Um, and I'm so proud to call all of you townies, um, townies for life and our employees. We have some of the best employees in, I think, the whole wide world. Um, every single person who has joined our team this year who, or who has been with us for the past 10 years, extremely grateful that you have um, just gone above and beyond the whole year yes. to help make Houndstown the success that it is. It's it's really hard. It is very touching, heartwarming. heartwarming, touching. It is. It's it's it's, it's like our vision coming to life. It's very. But what about our dysfunctional children? You didn't mention them at all. Are we going to give them a shout out, a happy holiday. Our kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Kids, dirt bags, whatever you want to call. <laughs> We'll call them. Well, our yes, children. our family, but our family, I'm assuming that's our what family's not watching. But yes, um, uh, uh, our Houndstown family and all of our, yes. you know, biological relatives. Yes, yes. we love you. <laughs> we love, we love, we love you everyone. Too. Yes. All right. Listen. Let's save this. All we'll right. Happy holidays, year. everybody. We're gonna see everybody in uh, 2022. Thanks for watching another exciting episode of the Dish on Dogs podcast. You can also watch us on YouTube on the Dish on Dogs podcast. If you're a listener, you can catch us on iTunes, Spotify, and all your other podcast platforms. For more information, click the link in the description. We'll see everybody next time.